welcome to this new show, the Mylapore Stories. We have three stories for you in this segment. And our first story is all about trees, trees in your backyard. There's a group of people, which is called Nilal in this city, which takes people around your neighborhood to show you the trees that are around on your roads. And this story is on a group of people who went around Prithvi Avenue in Alvarpet on a recent Sunday. Take a look. Niral is an organization that works towards promoting sensitive greening in, the, in urban areas. Uh, we are largely uh, working in Chennai. We conduct these uh, neighborhood tree walks to introduce communities to the trees that are present in their own neighborhood so that they are better informed and they are able to protect the trees that exist in their own areas. So, now we are here in there are many large trees. There are native trees and exotic trees. How do we protect this tree? We are going to talk about this walk. My pinadi is a Nagalingam tree. It is actually a Nagalingam tree. We have a religious significance, but it doesn't belong to our country. It comes from another country. Why is it saddled with such a name as the flowers are supposed to give out a kind of bad smell but believe me I have gone up close to the terrace la boy and smelled in the, in the public urine I don't know there is no smell actually there. So this is a roadside. They grow massively in this special way foundation. You have huge growth and they just go up, you know, so tall. Those um, seeds and the, uh, the badam is edible. Roast funny chakra, unlike this one, and all the animals uh, favor this uh, badam. Brought this very, very specifically, Madam Indira Gandhi brought it because tree cover in India had come down to four persons, depleted, and she wanted quick uh, yeah, deforestation. So we brought this. In this one, da. we put the forest and all. This was what was planted. Now they are going through, you know, removing this and replanting and all that. Subabul. Subabul. South. Not South. I've been walking around in uh, Chennai for a while and I've been very curious about how a lot of these trees have different colors through different seasons. It's been a year that I shifted here and uh, there are times that I have questions in my mind about what these leaves are and whether I can eat these uh, you know little uh, little fruits etc or not and I don't know where to go. I got to know about Niral about uh, six months ago and I really enjoy their walks because uh, they, they they talk about every tree in a very knowing way and they answer as many questions as they know and they also leave us with a lot of questions. So every time I spend time in a Niral walk, I realize that I become even more in love with trees than I am. Um, it's fascinating to see that we don't notice trees even though there are so, so many in Chennai and so large in size. Uh, but typically I see, I see even myself not noticing them unless somebody uh, you know, shakes me up like a Niral walk does and shows me the fascination of variety that, the, uh, that Chennai has. That's why I'm here. Okay. And if you go outside Anna University, you find these huge trees and they grow to this girth. Uh, so this is the Tabubia. Again, the thing with anything that grows fast is it does not put enough food or strong. Long. Okay, so it ends up having brittle branches, brittle branches, and then it's you know on the surface. And here you have a tree that is belongs to our. Slow what is our what is our climate? It is the it is dry. It is hot. 
So this is so suited to that. It grows slowly and it has got strong wood. So you won't find unless you have planted it very badly. You normally don't find these trees falling or breaking that easily. So that is the uh, magiram. You can of course talk a lot about it. It's yeah. got a lot of religious significance Krishna's also. Krishna's favorite flower. It's called vakulam in Sanskrit. And there is a ragam called vakulabharanam. Mm. And it's a uh, favorite of Shiva also. In fact, uh, you have this concept of thalam riksham. Thalam riksham. Yeah. So you have this concept of thalam riksham. In Tirvati, which is a suburb of Chennai, this is the thalam riksham there. So what do you mean by a thalam riksham? Is that would have been a tree that was very, pre, you know, predominant locally. So it has been given a special status, but unfortunately, we are losing all that. And it is, these are all good ways to bring back this, uh, these trees. These beads were are, have been used Wait. for long for See, this, this ornamental <laughs> purposes. But the Guru Kovil is the Arkuma. Other one, it's a creeper yeah, actually. Other one, yeah. Other creeper. Kanne Kanne ah, it's got black dots. Ah, number the Pulea or Kanna Vepoya. Okay. That's the creeper. That's the black dot. Or. So you have a saying. And the gum in the sack, in the sack, there is a gum that is made called Jingani gum, which is again very medicinal. And then the, uh, another big use is very useful in the road. This is Naga, Naga Lingam. Naga Lingam. There will be a Lingam inside the flower. It's exactly like this Lingam shape. Yeah, so this is false term. This is the unusual uh, nagalingam again this is actually a south american tree gayanensis gayanensis so it's from guyana it's from guyana actually but uh, yeah because yeah, no, it's a very fragrant uh, flower and then we have happily adapted it saying that this looks like a shivalingam here and there is a hood and all that the scientific name of this tree is cassia fistula the leaves are deciduous the flowers are yellow in color. The state flower of Kerala is uh, the flower of this tree. The fruit is a legume. I came to KTP with my mom on February 2017. I liked the park very much and was interested to know more about these trees. So I came to then I uh, came to know about Junior Yuva. That's for kids. And I joined the program. I I learned. To, I was asked to observe one tree for every month, and I chose to observe the Sarakondrai tree. So I the seed pods look like young green snakes hanging from the tree. When they dry up, they look brown in color, and they look like colatum sticks. <laughs> uh, I made a bead necklace like thing by cutting those and uh, I presented it for my project. I came to know about this tree by observing it regularly as a part of Needles Junior Yuva program. Oh, wow. That story was about trees. And this one, the second, is about the old houses of Mylapore. Now there is another group of people, and this group is a bunch of architects in our city, which takes people around to look at the houses that are maybe 50, 60, 70 years old in the inner streets of Mylapore. And this story that you look at was on one such walk called the Houses of Mylapore walk.
today we are conducting our house uh, as based on our initiative Madras Inherited. Uh, we have a big crowd today of more than 25 uh, people and it really is very satisfying to see so many people come out uh, early in the morning to learn a little bit more about the architecture, the history of uh, Mylapur. We have been doing this for the last couple of years and over time we are seeing more houses uh, disappear and it's, uh, I feel it's our duty and our responsibility to tell the story uh, to as many people before more and more houses disappear and we will have very little of our heritage left to talk about. So Madras inherited biggest purpose is to spread the word uh, as far and wide as possible and uh, get as many people interested in heritage and engaged uh, in heritage and invested in heritage like the way we are. So we hope to, through this initiative, do many more walks, uh, not just within Mylapur but in other parts of the city uh, as well. Within Mylapur specifically, we have designed more than four or five interesting routes that have different stories to share. So uh, I, I hope that more people sign up uh, to join us for these walks and be part of this initiative. We're also uh, as part of the initiative designing a few uh, interesting souvenirs, all of which are inspired by the architecture and the design of many of these houses. So uh, if any of you are interested, please follow us on Facebook and Instagram and uh, we'd love to be in touch with more people who are doing similar work and who are interested in being part of the initiative. kind of reveals itself here and how it works. So you actually see those those uh, angled, the flat brick that I was telling you about that allows for creating a large span and distributing that more. So the upper floor kind of gives it away, uh, unfortunately because of its condition, but uh, still uh, we get quite a uh, good insight on that. And there are other interesting things. This being made of a stone, your, uh, your, uh, your, your support structure, being made out of wrought iron. All of these are indicators of when this house may have actually come into uh, existence. And uh, slightly further away, you see that extremely classical. example the turrets in the corner of, uh, of the parapet wall on top are uh, very very distinct uh, Spanish and Portuguese influences. Uh, the crest that you're seeing was the crest of the crown of Portuguese and Spain in the 1600s and it has no re direct relevance to this building but it's essentially uh, a copy of the same uh, crest that was uh, used by the Portuguese. And then the, the wonderful lion motif that you're seeing uh, on the first floor, that kind of detailing you will not see in any other building. And it's got traces of everything from a classical order at the bottom to a, so, uh, the, the sunshades on the side are very gothic in nature. Uh, 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 the, 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 the entire parapet on top is extremely and very directly uh, Portuguese and uh, normally we would get permission into this building, they're very very friendly but because we're running a little late today, we are uh, slightly behind schedule but uh, uh, incentive to join our walk again and maybe hopefully we'll get into this building. It's got a lovely courtyard in the centre, a lot of these buildings uh, in terms of their planning, they're still very, very vernacular and traditional. Their facades may show a hybrid of influences and that's why I said today, I'd like us to all go back with the thought of the juxtaposition being one of the keys. For example, look at those pillars on that relatively new building uh, at the back. Uh, there would have been some point in time when this entire street would have had characters or characteristics similar to the building that we're seeing here. You can see those columns there. Can all of you kind of see the traces of that? So just imagine an entire street elevation with similar facades and then a mosque of great historic relevance uh, right here and then the Jain temple 50 meters uh, away from all of this. So this used to be Mylapur. I mean it, it still is Mylapur but uh, I can only imagine in its heyday how amazing a neighborhood and how uh, eclectic and cosmopolitan uh, a place like Mylapur actually would have been.
finally, this is not a story. We will leave you with music and Mylapur, so Carnatic music. This was uh, uh, an event that was uh, got up to remember the Maestro Shemangudi Srinivasa Iyer and a concert by the violin vidwan, Professor T. N. Krishnan. We hope you enjoyed this segment.
So three stories in this package, and we hope you enjoyed it. Do get in touch with us, write to us. And in a few days, maybe in a week, we'll have another package coming out for you from Mylapore.